Hello and welcome to CS230. This is lecture six and it's lesson one. And today we're going to be working with JavaScript and um, array prototype functions. And these are functions like map, reduce and filter. And they allow us to perform very fast transformations on array data. They can look a little bit confusing because they tend to be written in a reductionist way. And then, um, uh, but you know, we have to learn this. And, uh, and for the examples, we'll just be using map. But you know, a lot of the, the, um, the general approaches here can be used for the other functions like reduce a filter as well. So reductionist, there's no quite a lot of reductionist stuff going on. So if you look at the hook operator here, um, the question mark colon is just a way of tightly writing um, an expression that has conditionals in there. So you know you can look and generate a person function here, for example, where you can um, create a function called greeting and look it uh, it checks the the um, value that was passed um, and if it exists then it uses it and if it doesn't exist then it uses an alternative string and then we can say um, hello your name or hello stranger it's kind of nice okay so anyway but that's just one kind of reductionist way we really want to start looking at array prototypes and array prototype functions are functions that you can construct and uh, add to uh, or create, I suppose, and add to the array prototype. Um, and you do that by saying array.prototype.name has some value. The value is some function that you're going to be working with, and name is the name of the function that's called. Now, this applies to all arrays to it, that you will create afterwards from this. Okay, so if you wanted to create an uppercase um, function, then you would say array.prototype.uppercase. It's defined as a function, then you do your normal looping to um, loop over all the the various um, characters in the string converted to uppercase. You can then declare uh, 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 an array, and then you can apply that function to that the array. Okay. What's important to realize is that you can't override the functionality of the existing prototypes like map and reduce and filter. Okay, so let's get to the map one. So the map method is used to apply a function on every single element in an array. So a new array is then returned. Lots of ways to do that, to define the syntax for map. Here's one that I like from MDN, the Mozilla Developer Network. So let your new array be the array where I've defined dot map. Some function callback has a value, an index, an array, and it returns the, uh, and basically it returns some processing for every single ele element of the array that's processed. And it's possible to do a few extra things as well. Okay, so really what happens is that you um, you basically create a callback function and the callback function then is applied to every element and it automatically iterates over that array. You can access the index of the current element that's been processed and you can access the full array itself. That's what these two pieces do here, okay? But generally we just want to have the variable that's been, that's been currently processed, okay? And um, it doesn't always work. Um, index that have never been set or have been deleted or which have never been assigned a value, they don't work. Here's a simple example. So here's an array with numbers one, four, and nine. We let the roots then be a new array, which is numbers dot map, the function which we're generating. And um, at this point, the callback function has a has a, a parameter num, and it returns the square root of the of number. So that's fairly straightforward. So roots is still one, two, three, and then the square is still one, four, uh, and the numbers. Uh, sorry, the square. Uh, root is one two three and we have one four nine so the original array is not changed you generate a new array so map generates an array that's really really important look you shouldn't be using a map at all if you're not go actually going to use the array it returns or if you're not returning a value from the callback or something like that okay so we so, so we can see lots of examples of how doing this sometimes there's a there's a, a something called a fat arrow way and that's a new another way of defining functions so you sometimes see it looking like this our new array is the old array dot map again this is the value it has the index and the array and we use this arrow notation here this fat arrow okay and that returns an element and so what you'll notice or what you'll probably figure out at this stage that um you know why do we use this version like you know what, what happened to the callback function what's really going on but the callback function is there we're just using it in a different way among, and then um, so it's um it's a way of writing functions so if we take this simple example here where we have an array one two three four 
we want to create a new array called plus five, then all it does is just creates a new array with each element with the addition of five. So plus five is this. We can use it this way using a map. The variable, the index, the array, and we're returning the value plus five. Okay, so really what's happened is that the fat arrow is just another way of writing functions. And we can use that then um, with map. And you see them combined with map a lot of the time. So here's an example of that, that. Here's a function. Here's a hello function. So we create a function called hello that returns hello world. Our normal brackets are there. It's called function, open brace, close brace. We can actually define it like this. Hello is defined as, or is assigned the value of the function, fat arrow, and return your hello world. Still have your braces. So basically we drop the function keyword and replace it with the fat arrow between the brackets and the braces. And then we can look at that in the console if we want. It's kind of nice to see how they all work. Um, we have a quick look. Let's say we define this value here, and uh, we'll see that they work. So it's nice. So we've just it, it works out quite nice. It's just a nice one. So if we call hello, we get hello world. It's not too bad, you know. And um, so it's easy and straightforward to do. Okay. So let's get back to our. Our document. Okay, I've given a very simple example of how you might use these um, fat arrow functions and how you can change the change it. And um, I think I have a, a little example here. Okay, so yeah, we'll um, we'll use them. Let's have a look at the code as well. Actually, while we're here, okay, for demo one. Uh, let's have a look. So really, I just have three small IDs. Okay, um, uh, div elements or paragraphs, which I've called demo one, demo two, demo three. I'm creating an array with some numbers. And then I'm creating a new array here, okay, from the numbers using the map function. And I'm creating, and this time I'm calling a function that I've actually defined called my function. And all this function does is it takes the value and multiplies it by 10. And then later down here, we're able to say, update the contents of demo one with the function new array one. And that happens here. We multiplied 65, 44, 12, and four by 10, easy. Now let's look at it, doing it a different way. We now use the map um, function, and we're not going to have a separate function like this time. We're embedding the map directly in here. Okay. So function num, num is the iterating parameter. Again, it, used, it could be val, it could be x, it could be n, it doesn't matter. And we're returning the num by num to get the square. So the second paragraph contains the square of the numbers. Now we're looking at the fat arrow version, so we have a new array function called three, new, sorry, new function called new array three, map. This time we're just using the brackets around the parameter, and um, the fat arrow, the braces, and our contents that sit there. And again, what that does is it gives us the cube of each of the numbers, and that's what we have in the third paragraph. Look, there's all sorts of fun stuff you can do. Um, you can look at this one here. We could try this. Num. Fat arrow, return num, but num, num. So that is essentially the same as the fat arrow version here, but you'll notice that it doesn't have brackets this time. You can do that if there's a single parameter, you can just choose to ignore it, okay? Also, if it turns out that you want to actually just have a single line in the processing function, and it just returns the value, then you can actually leave out the return. Like here, we can leave it here, okay? So that's... Kind of weird, I suppose, but it works just fine. And we have a further reductionist or shorthand notation where we can actually leave out the brackets around the parameter if there's just one parameter and it's a single line of code. So, you know, we got from this here to this using fat arrow. And you'll see this reductionist quite a lot when you start playing with, um, with uh, JavaScript. Let's copy that. Let's go to our console. Okay, we've created this array numbers. Okay, and now we go back and just copy some of that code that we've been playing with. Let's do this one here. This is the most reductionist one here. And we just create this new array, this new function called new array.
new array 3 and we see that it actually worked and created it. So it's very, very nice, very, very straightforward. But it can be a bit confusing because you need to know and understand the rules for the fat arrows, when and when you can't use the brackets, when you can and can't use the braces and so forth, and what gets passed as you move along. So it um, can be complex, definitely worthwhile learning. It's very, very useful. Okay, the W3 School of Tutorials have a nice, excellent examples of how you might use these functions in conjunction with the this keyword. It's not trivial but um, definitely worthwhile looking at. So we looked at, very simply and quickly, looked at the array prototype map um, as an example, and you can also work with replace and filter in the same way. Here's a nice example of creating um, uh, an array of objects with key values, and then you can actually create a map in conjunction with the fat arrow notation to produce a new um, reformatted array that looks like this. this. The original array doesn't change. So we'll see a little bit how to do that in one of the later lessons. Okay. Thank you very much.